What's happening guys, it's Nate and Martin from Player Court. Today we're gonna to show you how to produce topspin by molding the clay. So we all know how to mold a clay, I guess, yeah. at some point in, it's in school or as a child. Point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you figured it out. Everybody immediately goes to the scene from ghosts. We're not talking about Patrick Swayze here, right? But Poor Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> Good film. But so what we're talking about is so many of us put so much emphasis on what's happening on the back end, right? right? Like the swing path, like low to high, that stuff helps get the vehicle where it needs to be, but it's what's happening at the destination. And the destination is what's happening at contact. So if you're working with someone and they're trying to learn top spin on the forehand or back end, let's use a clock. Where are they making contact with the ball? Uh, they should be probably making contact around six o'clock mm -hmm. and then working up to 12 o'clock. Yeah. Kind of so six to 12. Just a war jet going over, don't worry, yep. everybody. Sound of freedom. <laughs> the sound of freedom. <laughs> so what we're talking about is on a clock, you want it, you want the feeling as if your hand, which will enable the racket to move from six to 12 o'clock. Now we're not making contact all the way underneath the ball. You're working more directly center on the ball, but this clock analogy is gonna help you mold the clay, right? This is what we want you to help feel. Now, you you probably play with as much feel as anyone I know. Like Martin is always talking to students about how he need, they, you need to work through the hands, right? right? So this is also true when we're working on the serve, right? right? So if I'm yeah. trying to learn a topspin serve, where are you gonna, where am I gonna, Teach me how to hit a top spin serve here. What am I doing? We'd still probably be working, if we're on the ad side, we'd probably be working like seven to one. Right. So you're still working like underneath the ball and then working up past it a little bit. And I think this yeah. is important for you guys to really focus on because we focus on so much of like what the racket is doing, it's keeping the body sideways, the racket drop. If I start from here and I toss the ball up and I make contact with my racket working from low to high but making contact with the ball from seven to one it's going to get top spin okay. and i've got to kind of i've got to be able to see it and feel that before i worry about all the other moving parts of the stroke right. all right so now let's go back to so some people might be asking they're like well there has to be you can't be a constant on everything right so body position does play a role let's go back to the ground strokes for just a moment if we're working through like cross courts and stuff like that how much does it change what do you what do you well, it, it, it changes a little bit, but like you don't want to feel like there's a major change. So if yeah. like you're working straight, it's going maybe six to 12. And now maybe if you're righty and you're going cross court, we're talking about going like maybe five to 11 on yeah. your forehand side. Yeah. So it's a very like subtle change here. Very, very subtle change. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think most of the time it's going to happen with your body position naturally anyway. So that top spin just really focus on, on working underneath that ball, mold the clay. Yeah. Right? right, so we're gonna jump on here. We're gonna show you exactly what we're talking about with, with, with molding clay. We'll show you through some demos and I'll kind of talk you through what's happening here. Here is a great drill to learn to mold the clay. You're holding the ball to the net strap with the strings. And you'll notice here the racket is fairly flush with the ball. So the racket face isn't overly closed or open. Now here you don't want to just go low to high, you want to push against the net because the swing is moving forward and then what you'll notice is the friction causes the strings to work from a 6 to 12 motion and this is creating top spin. Now Martin has dropped back to the baseline hitting his forehand and we can see the swing path working low to high. This is a big product of keeping the hand and the wrist loose. Now, as he works towards contact, that mindset of molding the clay, of allowing the strings to operate from that six to 12 on a clock, it's gonna produce the big top spin. Now, the important thing is at contact, you don't roll your hand over. Allow the hand to work through as if you were in the first row pushing through the net, and that contact slightly under center will produce the top spin you're looking for. Similar concept here with the top spin serve or the kick serve is that you want to move the ball up your hand using the strings. Now naturally because the rocket works from your left to the right on the kick serve, you're going to be more seven to two on a clock face here. Once comfortable, go ahead and allow the rocket to work the ball off the hand, holding that rocket out to the right side of your body. Now we're just focusing on the feel here, but it is important that you're tossing from right to left. 
As the racket moves left to right, make sure you're making contact from seven to two or in the clock face and making sure that racket is moving parallel to the baseline. Another tip, try to keep your body sideways, but this feel of what the ball is doing at contact is really important. All right guys, hope today's video helped an absolute ton. We deleted our closer, so we just get to watch Martin's marvelous serve here. But if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, rock that bell so you never miss a player core video, and we'll see you here really soon.